Hello, in this video we are going to investigate how we can build weighted histograms. Before we get into that, however, it is worth considering why this is a useful thing to do. Whenever you construct a histogram, you are doing so because you would like to estimate the probability distribution for some quantity, S. If it is easy to sample from this distribution of interest, you would construct an unweighted histogram. If, however, the probability distribution that you want to sample is difficult to sample, you might choose to generate a weighted histogram. The reason for constructing a weighted histogram when the distribution is hard to sample is that you can then sample from some easier to sample distribution, P prime of S. You then reweight to extract P of S. The reason why this reweighting works is that you can calculate the unnormalized probabilities p of s and p prime of s in this expression. From these two quantities, you then calculate a weight for the configuration, the w of s here. You then note that p of s, the probability distribution of interest, is proportional to w of s multiplied by p prime of s. By sampling p prime of s and noting the weights, you should, therefore, be able to extract the distribution of P of S. Let's consider how this works algorithmically before getting into the details of why this particular algorithm works and the underlying mathematics. Suppose our random variables fall somewhere in the range shown here. Just as we would when we construct an unweighted histogram, we split up this range into a number of discrete bins as shown here. We then generate our random variables from the sampling distribution together with the weights. The locations of the circles here indicate the values that the random variables take, while the sizes of the points are supposed to be connected to their weights. As we would do in the unweighted case, we then note which bin each of our random variables falls within. Now, however, instead of counting the number of variables that fall in each bin, we add together the weights of the variables that fall in each of the bins, as shown here. To do all this in Python, we would write a program something like the one shown here. This code is similar to the code that we would write to calculate an unweighted histogram. We thus define an array called yvals here that we will use to hold our histogram. As we would do for an unweighted histogram, this array is initially set equal to zero. We then have a loop that generates a series of random variables and their corresponding weights. The weights of these points generated are then added to the elements of y vowels that correspond to the bins that the random variables fell within in the line that is indicated here. We are thus using y vowels to accumulate the total weight of the point that fall within the ith bin, as opposed to the total number of points that fall in the bin, which is what we would have accumulated if the histogram was unweighted. Once the loop is finished, we can normalise the histogram by dividing by the total weight of all the generated points and plot a bar chart that shows the final histogram. Hopefully, you now understand how to write a program to calculate a weighted histogram. Frankly, if you know how to write a program to calculate an unweighted histogram, there is not significant additional difficulty associated with writing the program to generate the weighted histogram. When we discussed unweighted histograms, we noted that the number of points in each of the bins was a sample from the multinomial distribution that is shown on this slide. In this expression, the x1, x2 and so on were the number of counts in each of the bins in the histogram, and the sum of all these quantities was thus n. In the context of unweighted histograms, we then explained that the pi values here were the probabilities that the random variable fell within each of the bins. These pi's sum to 1, and we could thus 
use a combination of maximum likelihood and Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers to determine the most likely values of these parameters given that the counts that we had observed by sampling. The same arguments hold for our weighted histogram. The only difference is that the pi in this expression are the p prime values. In other words, the pi values in the multinomial distribution are, act are the values of pi in the distribution that was actually sampled. As discussed in the first slide of this presentation, however, these pi prime values can be calculated from the pi values for the distribution that we are interested in if we use the weights. Now notice that we can replace the pi prime values in our multinomial distribution with the expression for this quantity. We thus arrive at a likelihood that is written in terms of the pi values for the distribution of interest. To be clear, all we are saying here is that when we sample from the distribution p prime, the number of counts in each of the bins together represent a sample from a multinomial distribution. This is exactly what we were saying in the derivation when we looked at an unweighted histogram. The only difference is that we are using the weights, the wi, to write the probability of falling in the ith bin when we sample from p prime in terms of the probability distribution of interest, p. From here onwards, the derivation follows on similarly from what we saw in the unweighted case. We work with the log likelihood rather than the likelihood because the position of the maximum is the same in both functions as the logarithm is monotonically increasing. The advantage of using the log likelihood is that the differentiation becomes easier. It is also worth noting that the second two terms here do not depend on pi. When I differentiate this expression, they are thus going to disappear. To prevent this slide from being cluttered with maths, I am thus not going to write these quantities in the expressions that follows, as I know that they will eventually disappear from the derivatives. We now complete our constrained optimization. Notice critically that the constraint of normalization is on the probability distribution we actually sampled, p prime, and that as such it is the sum over all i of w i p i that is equal to 1 here. When we construct our extended function using Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers, we thus find the following. Taking the partial derivative of our extended function with respect to pj gives the following result. Furthermore, because we are searching for a maximum in the function, we can set this derivative equal to zero. Rearranging the resulting expression gives the following expression for pj. If we then reinsert this expression into the normalization constraint, we get the following. We thus find that minus lambda is equal to n as the sum of the counts in all of the bins is equal to the total number of random variables that were generated. To conclude then, we have derived the following result. In this expression, the wi here is the ratio of pi prime, the sample distribution, to pi, the distribution of interest. The xi is the number of random variables that fell into the ith bin when we sampled the distribution p prime. Finally, the pi is the maximum likelihood estimator for the probability that the random variable will fall in the ith bin of the histogram for the distribution that we are interested in, p. We can thus use this expression to calculate probability distributions even if we do not know how to sample them. Furthermore, it is worth noting that all we are calculating on the right hand side here is 1 over the average of all the weights of the points that fell in the ith bin.
Notice last of all that a proportionality sign appears in this expression rather than an equal sign. This is important to note as the probabilities that we are calculating using this expression are not necessarily normalised. Thank you for your attention.